We're starting a new section on direct and indirect variation. And let's take a look here. So the idea of direct variation is this. The two variables are changing in the same ratio. So they've got it down here. So y and some, let's just call it x. y and x are varying directly in that if y goes up, x has to go up. So k over here is called the constant of variation. So suppose it's 3. Well, that is never going to change. It, it, it is constant. So these two ratios have to stay the same. If y goes up, x has to go up. If y goes down, x would have to go down because they have to stay the same for that constant at all times. So it makes sense to me as this ratio, you can see it as this ratio, where they have to stay in that exact same ratio all the time. Now, if you turn that into a formula, what you get is this, where you have y is opposite of x, and you have it by that constant. It's just this rearranged. So they stay in that constant ratio, but if you turn it into a formula, y equals that constant times the x. Now, here's an example of a problem. What we need to do is we need to find that constant uh, k. We are missing it. So here's what we've, we know. We know y varies directly with the cube of x. So they're on opposite sides. This is direct variation. And you could have thought of it like this, where I have th this is that constant ratio. But as a formula, it looks like this. Now. We want to find y when x is 6, but if we're going to do that, we have to find out what the constant of variation is. They didn't tell us. So I know y is 25 when x is being, or when 2 is being cubed. So I've got 25 equals k times 8. So k is going to be 25 over 8. All right, now we found the constant of variation, and the reason why we needed that is we're going to solve this equation. I want to know what y is when x is going to be 6. Now I'm going to let them crunch the numbers there for us. But so they've done what we've done. We found the constant variation. We're putting in the x, cubing it. All that crunches down to 675. Okay, now I'm going to work another. You can always pause it if you want to. I know that y is varying directly with x squared. Okay, well, y is 24. I don't know the constant of variation. Oops, square this time. So I've got 24 equals k to the ninth. Now we don't usually write it in this order, but 24 over 9 is our k. Now, I'm going to reduce that by the top and the bottom. I'd get 8 over 3 for my k. All right, now I know the constant. So now I could solve any problem that's related to this relationship by just saying y is 8 thirds times 4. Now I'm putting in 4 now. They want to know what's y when x is 4. So I'm putting that in. We're doing squared this time. That becomes 16. We can get a little calculator help here. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it as y is 128 over 3 is the best we can do. All right, now that was direct variation, so inverse uh, variation is going to work like this. So I'm going to just do the x and y. They're doing powers, but so. Here's what's happening. I have some constant over here on the left. Well, if this constant is going to stay the same, when y goes up, x would have to go down. And if x goes up, y would have to go down. So they're, they're varying inversely of each other. One's going in one direction, the other would have to go the other direction in order to keep a constant. Now, if you turn this into a formula, you get this. If I swing the x to the other side, I'm going to get y is k over that x. So you can see if you're comfortable with this being a reciprocal, that's like the inverse. So I've got y on one side, I've got x in the denominator on the other side, that's like a reciprocal, like an inverse. So that kind of makes, helps it make sense. But the, the root of it lies in this equation right here, where the constant equals x times y. So one goes up, the other would have to go down. 
Okay, so, yeah, I thought this was a little weird here. Um, this is a bit of a strange question, question, but so here's what they're saying. If you have the velocity times time, it equals the distance, right? How fast you're going, how long you're going. So basically rate times time equals distance, right? Okay, so they're telling us that we are going to go a distance of 100, and they want to see how the relationship works between time and velocity. Well, can you see that they're in an inverse relationship with each other? So we get down to this formula here. Time is up here, velocity is down there. We saw this is inverse. So if you were doing v times t equals 100, that's the definition. Here's my constant. As the velocity goes up, time will go down. And if time goes up, velocity goes down. So they have an inverse relationship. All right, now this is more what we were looking at before. Let me see if I can feel comfortable. Well, let me do it my way. Okay, so I'm looking for that constant of variation. And I know that 25 equals the k, uh, and it's the cube of x, so it's 2 to the third. So I should have done it like this, y equals k over q to the third. Now these are in an inverse relationship. Remember, so if they were together, it would be this. One goes up, the other's got to go down. So I've got 25 equals k over 8. And again, I'm going to let them just crunch that final. And, oh, I went too far. So my k is going to be 200. Now, I know my constant of variation, so let's use that now to finish this problem. Well, what will happen when x is 2? I don't know why. Okay, I've got 200 over 2 to the third. Oh, I'm sorry. I messed that up. It's not 2 to the third. So when our constant is 200, x is 6 to the third. That's what we were saying here. And so crunch that down and reduce it. You get down to 25 over 27. OK, pause it if you want to try this. y is varying inversely with the square of x. So here's my equation. Now let's find that constant of variation. When, x is, or when y is 8, I've got 3 to the second. Okay, so 8 equals k over 9. Now multiply that up. k is going to be 72. All right, now I know my constant, so let's plug it in. This is now my equation. All I've got to do is evaluate it. When x is 3, I get 72 over 9. So y is 8. Oh, I'm sorry. I, this is the second time I've done that wrong. So I keep this as the numbers I'm using here. So I wondered why I got right back to what I just had. So I want to find y, find y when x is 4. This is more like it. 72 divided by 16. Does that go in evenly? Well, four and a half. Okay, now sometimes there's multiple variables. Like in the real world, you're doing an engineering application, something like that, physics, there's multiple of I don't knows, and some of them are varying directly, some are varying indirectly. So we're going to have it in the same equation. <clears throat> okay, so they're telling us x is varying directly with the square of y. So we're going to start building this. x varies directly with the square of y. So there's my constant. Remember, directly they're both on the top. And, it, 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 and inversely with the cube of x. OK, well, there's x inversely with the cube of x puts it down on the bottom. Now, they've just told us some values at which to evaluate it in order that we can find that constant. So I've plugged in all of those known values, which allows me to find that my constant is 3. So now I have the missing constant, and they want us to evaluate x when I have these two, when y is 1 and z is 27. So just plug that in. We know the constant now, and so crunch that down. x is 1. 
Okay, let's try one more here. Pause it if you want to. So x is varying directly with the square of y. So that puts them both on the top. And I've got my constant of variation. Now x is varying inversely with z. So just straight z. Now I have my relationship, but what I don't have is the value of the constant. So let's use this information to find it. So I'm going to rewrite this in the front. Well, this would be 16k over 2. So I've got 40 equals 8k. Divide both sides by 8. So I find k is going to turn out to be 5. Okay, well now I know my constant, and so I can use it in any application I want about this relationship. So here's my equation. I know y is 10 and z is 25. So I'm going to put those in. So get 100, 500 divided by 25, x is going to be 20. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So just be careful that you understand direct variation is going to put them, on, if they're on the both, other sides of the equation, direct variation is going to put them both on the top. And inverse variation is going to put one on the top and the other one in the denominator underneath the fraction symbol.